Besides having the salinity the same, you need to be watching your temperature. You don't want any temperature shock. Also, pH may be a concern. Luckily, this seawater that we make is really well buffered and pH shouldn't be a problem, but you need to go ahead and have a pH meter and just make sure the pH is not a problem. Okay. Okay, during the acclimation process, you're going to use two different types of feed. Back in the earlier days, we used to worry about culturing algaes and diatoms and actually culturing brine shrimp. But since then, the two feed companies, Rangan and Ziegler, have developed very fine feeds, very finely ground feeds that can replace the brine shrimp. This first feed you're going to feed, the particle size is actually smaller than 600 mic uh, microns. It's called PL Ready Reserve, and it's actually a powder. It's a very fine powder. The second, you'll use the first feed for about the first three days. The second feed is between 600 and 850 microns, and it's more, it's more granulated, still pretty small. And you'll use that after day three until you get them into the pond. When you get them into the pond, you'll use a third type of feed, which is a little bit coarser. Now, this feed is very expensive. These are 20 pound bags, and you'll spend more than $40 a bag, not including freight. So you want to have a, a really good scale that can measure in tenths of a pound when you're feeding your PL, so you don't only waste this feed. So go ahead and invest in a good scale. It'll pay for itself in its feed savings. Okay, this is a six acre pond and there are seven paddle aerators running in here continuously. This farm also has a backup 10 horsepower aerator and one, two, three, four PTO aerators driven by tractors. So you can see this particular pond is well, is, is well uh, supplied with uh, aeration. You should plan on aerating a pond um, at a minimum of four horsepower per surface acre. Another rule of thumb, the use is, if you use one-third horsepower per acre foot um, during the daytime, that will keep stratification to a minimum. In other words, if you run one-third of a horsepower per acre foot all day long, your oxygen levels from top to bottom should be fairly constant. This pond also has an automatic monitoring system. If you can see out in the middle of the pond, there's a buoy. And that buoy has a dissolved oxygen probe and a temperature gauge. And it's continually monitoring the oxygen level at about a foot depth. Ideally, you want to have some kind of a monitoring system on the bottom of the pond. But in this situation, uh, the uh, oxygen is monitored continually. And if the oxygen drops below say four parts per million, this uh, 10 horsepower paddle wheel will, will click on. This is Mike Stewart. He works on the uh, Compton Fish Farm. At Falkland Springs. Falkland Springs Farm. And uh, Mr. Uh, Brian Compton is the owner. And Mike's been here, what, three, four years? Uh, five years. Five years. And uh, they have three shrimp ponds. Three shrimp ponds, and they're the very good producers. Uh, last year, I believe they had an average yield of 7,000 pounds per acre, which is probably the, the, the leading, the, they're the leading grower in the shrimp industry in terms of pounds per acre. And uh, you can see on their shrimp farm, they like to aerate. And, and I am a firm believer that aeration um, increases your yield. 
Mike explained to them uh, how the aerators are set up. Well, Vernon, which is from Belize, he likes he likes continuous water movement around the outer perimeter of the pond, and that's the reason we've got he he sort of set these up in the in, in the form that they're in, sort of keep water continuously moving around the okay. whole perimeter of the pond. Okay. And these these uh, little aerators here, they run 24 hours a day once they get up to a certain stage of growth. And like I said, the, the larger one is run off of the Roy system. Okay. Uh, I see you have a lot of PTO. Uh, well, we, this this pond died off yesterday. Uh, okay. And that's the reason we've got a lot of PTOs in there, uh, just trying to keep it up. But I, it, it shows to be greening back up. I believe the bloom's coming back. Okay. What's the main difference between aerating a shrimp pond and a catfish pond? Well, like Vernon, Vernon always tells us the shrimp stays close to the bottom of the water, so okay. I mean, the bottom of the pond, so there's less oxygen down low. Mm -hmm. So he thinks movement to the water that helps keep keep the oxygen from, from bottom to top. Right. Pretty much the same. Try to keep it the same. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Fish, shrimp fish ponds. They just we aerate them until. Mm -hmm. Got those on Royce, and they just cut off and on as, as the Royce tells them to. Is it true that shrimp need to be aerated in all sections of the pond? They don't like to train to come to the aerator, whereas right. catfish will train to come to an aerator? What we can tell is that, that the whole pond needs aeration. Okay, in a shrimp pond. Yeah, in the shrimp ponds, need to all need the whole pond needs aeration. Okay. As much as possible. Right. As much as you right. can. Can stand. Well, we would agree that, that the auction on the bottom is, is more critical than the auction on the top. Well, I've never that's... seen shrimp up one time. Mm -hmm. and we had real low oxygen content mm -hmm. and it, it, they, they came up to the top. Other than that, you don't never see them unless mm -hmm. uh, throw a cast net and catch it. back on the Green Prairie Aqua Farms with David Tucker Coddington and he's going to show us how to throw a cast net and the reason why we, we, we use cast nets on a shrimp farm is the farmers have to sample their shrimp about once a week to determine how fast they're growing and that will determine how much feed they need to throw in the ponds in the, in the weeks to come and I'm going to let David here show you how to, how to use a cast net. All right, there's a number of different ways you can cast net. I know one way. I've tried a couple of them, and this one is the only one I can do halfway decently well. Uh, there's, like I say, you can you can learn them different different ways, different places. Uh, I use a, a five foot radius cast net because it's just about uh, proper height. When I take this thing out and stand it on the ground here, it's it's just about eyesight in front of me here. See, I can get it and grab it easily. Uh, you can get a six footer. That'd be having to make me go up like that. Uh, this is a three eighths inch mesh. You can go a half inch. I like a three eighths because I can get the shrimp in uh, the cast net earlier. Uh, they'll, they'll escape a lot through a half inch. They'd probably escape through half, half the year. You'd probably get scapers through it. So I'd say go for at least a three eighths inch and a five or six foot radius um, uh, length. All right, I just uh, just got to wrap this rope up here. That thing is down there. I'm just uh, going to wrap it up here, just roll it up. You don't have to do it any particular way, just so that that, that rope will coil, uncoil easily when you throw it. And I just grab it by the neck here, by the throat, and I grab it down about this point here, fold it over, grab it with my right hand. So I got that net ready to go. And then uh, what I like to do, I just grab a, anywhere down that rope, put it in my teeth, and then I take about three wraps, just about like that. 
Keep it on my arm. I'm ready to go.